Hi, I'm Gianna Nigro, and welcome to the first installment of Ithaca College's Alumni Look Back series. Our first guest, a graduate of 78, has won several Emmy Awards, won the Sportscaster of the Year Award nine times, covered eight Olympics, and received the Jessica Savage Award for a Distinction of Excellence in Journalism in 2017. Welcome to the call. We're so excited to have you today. Thank you very much, Gianna. Great to be with you. So just start off, how are you? How have you been? These past months have been crazy. Yes, it's been a very turbulent time in the world, but you know we are all proceeding as best we can. Uh, the COVID-19, uh, I guess, whole revolution has changed all of our lives. But, you know, I think one of the things that the Governor Cuomo said right from the beginning is you need to reimagine, you need to figure this out, you need to be creative, you need to figure out a way to to mash through this. And therefore, it just takes a little extra thinking, it takes a little bit extra uh, patience, it takes a little more understanding. But but overall, we're, we're doing everything pretty much the same, just trying to be more cautious and understanding that this is the world in which we live and we have to adapt accordingly. So I think that's been the big message during COVID-19. Reimagine, be patient, be smart, and try to, to move forward. Completely agree. So just to sort of get into it, um, so before Ithaca, let's go to high school. So what sports did you do in high school? So I played tennis and basketball at Livingston High School. I played basketball since I was a little kid. I played every sport growing up. Um, but those were the two sports that, you know, I played varsity. And I, I love basketball, you know, a great deal. And I wanted to make it in the NBA, but obviously it wasn't big enough, good enough, quick enough. So I guess this is a vicarious thrill to be able to announce instead of uh, be on, on the court trying to make jump shots took a lot of lessons early on, but I just, uh, I was an athlete and I wanted to play another sport in the spring. And I, I kind of liked that better than I did baseball at the time. So I'm just curious. I know that you've hosted um, coverage for the New York Knicks. So are they your favorite basketball team or are you a fan of someone else? <laughs> no, I, I, I grew up a Knicks, Rangers, Yankees Giants fan although I did like the Jets a lot during the Joe Nam Namath era but those teams kind of go together so yeah I'm embarrassed to say that I'm a Knicks fan because they've been <laughs> bad for so long but in my glory years I was actually imitating Marv Albert announcing the Knick games in 1969-70 and 72-73 when they won the NBA title those teams were very much uh, a part of my youth and I still imitate Marv Albert, right side line, Monroe, hands to Frazier, deep right corner to Busher, side jump, yes, and a count, and a foul. And so I used to listen to those Nick games, keep the radio underneath my pillow so like my mother wouldn't hear on those West Coast games, and that became a part of it. How could I broadcast what Marv Albert was doing? And I would go into the kitchen and my mother would, would be baking a cake and I would go, Doris Beck now makes a move. Oh, she's got the, she's got the, she's got the little bit of the glaze. Now she's got the frosting. Now Doris Beck moves to the inside. And she thought I was kind of crazy, but she let it go. <laughs> and she knows that uh, it ended up being what I wanted to do most in life anyway, a career broadcasting. Exactly. So you got a bit of practice for anything. It's crazy. Exactly. So oh, now to move on to college. Um, so how did you find out about Ithaca and why did you end up choosing Ithaca? Ithaca was a great location. It was three and a half hours from home. It had a beautiful campus and it had a broadcasting, you know, division at a, at a broadcasting school. It was, it was the park school, but it wasn't like as amazing as it is today, but it was pretty good. We were in the old Dillingham Center, not in this beautiful new building. But I knew I kind of wanted to do that, but I was an accounting major, like an idiot. I don't know why, <laughs> but I ended up being an accounting major and I had to make a declaration. I started out undecided and junior year, I had to make a choice. So I went to accounting, did all my extracurricular stuff at the TV and radio station. Even as a freshman, I did reports in the morning, trudging through the snow to get to the, to the broadcasting center and doing the 6.30 a.m. sportscast. So... I mean, I knew what I wanted to do, but my major was not broadcasting. I ended up winning an award there, the AE Row 
award for outstanding uh, sports broadcasting. And I made a speech that said, this shows what a non-major can do. And I don't know if that was good or bad, <laughs> but I'm very proud that I did all that stuff on the side and mm -hmm. I still got my accounting degree. And uh, that's the way the story goes. It all worked out. Personal opinion. What skills do you think are essential in developing an on-air personality? I think you have to have an ability to connect with the camera, you know, eye contact, comfortable. Um, how can you smile? How can you be warm? How can you be serious when it when it's time to be serious? Um, you have to be able to connect to the camera in a, in a great way. This Marty Glickman, one of the great coaches, once said to me, go up to the camera during the day, say, hello, camera. How are you doing? I'll see you tonight. You have to really make it as if you're talking to one person. Mm -hmm. I think your voice is important. At Ithaca, I was very nasal. I was nasal for most of my career until I got into my 40s. You have to grow out of that. Some people are just natural. I know a lot of young kids today who are really good at it, but you know, it took me a long time to to learn that it comes from your diaphragm and that your voice, you don't have to scream and come through your, your throat. You've been in the industry a while. You've accomplished so much. So since you've graduated from Ithaca, how has the industry changed? Like, how have you watched it change, if it's changed at all? I mean, there's so many different different media outlets now and there's the advent of social media twitter is like giving somebody a press pass who isn't even a broadcaster they can say and 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 write anything they want i think that today's day and age is more based on opinion now i do more stuff in the field where i'm reporting or i can try to present a good story or i try to ask a good question but other guys are totally opinion oriented. And I think that's what they want for talk radio today. They want somebody who's opinionated. Um, so things have changed. Uh, there's, there's a lot of demands on being accurate and there's a lot of stuff out there which is not accurate. So I kind of pride myself on being accurate. I think it's more challenging than it's ever been before. Mm -hmm. uh, so we kind of touched upon this in the very, very beginning. So now to kind of move into, you know, the virus has changed everyone's lives. And like you said, we've all had to adapt to it. So before getting back to the studio, did you have a home set up? No, it's a good question, Joe. I was home for probably four months oh, wow. and NBC set me up with a great little setup there, which was a camera, uh, a transmission kit, which is called the, it was a live view. There's two different ones they have today, live view and Degero. I had a live view, uh, which allowed you to create the transmission from your home back into NBC. Uh, I had a you know tripod for the camera. I have my wireless microphone. Uh, they gave me a set, which was a nice generic blue background, NBC kind of looking set. And I put that up. And I also got a teleprompter, which was on a laptop towards the end when I, I do this Sunday night show called Sports Final. When we started to do that show after about three and a half, four months, I needed something for 30 minutes. Otherwise, I was just memorizing my copy and writing it all on manila folders, which is, which is you know, the Beck tradition. Everything I do is like on these manila folders. Um, so it really was you know, a really professional setup. It didn't look quite as good as the studio, but nice. it worked. It worked. We, we made it work. The guys would, would start faxing me back scripts until I figured out how to do uh, the computer with, with a, a program where I was able to type scripts and I could sometimes get them back, but I couldn't print from home. So everything had a little bit of a, of a hiccup in it a little bit of a roadblock, but it, it worked out. So now to go off of that, how has working in a studio changed? You know, do you see a decrease in the crew or? So our, our operation still is filled with a lot of people who are remote and some that are back. So I would say that our newsroom area is maybe half of what it was. And my location for the, for the sports news is in the overall newsroom instead of being in the studio. My Sunday night show, I go back to the studio to deliver it. When I tape interviews for the Sunday night show, I tape it on Zoom and I do that from upstairs, which is our newsroom. 
and then I deliver the show from downstairs in the studio. So things have changed because of social distancing and all of those concerns. My location has, has obviously changed. Um, and, and that's been one of the big changes. So winding down, last question or so, um, what broadcasting experience are you most proud of? Like I said earlier, you're so accomplished. You've done so much in your career. What is, what are you most proud of out of it all? I mean, I think I love the Olympics. I've done eight Olympics and the Olympics are all about telling stories. I mean, that's really what the fabric of the Olympics is all about. And so I've had a chance to, you know, describe some of the great moments in sports, but also to tell the stories related to the New York market because we always cover our athletes. I think I'm most proud of the relationships I've built with coaches and players over the years. Uh, trust, friendship's important, but trust even more important. An athlete will give you the interview if he believes in you, if he trusts you. Jeter once said to me, be honest and be fair. And no one can ever get mad at you. He said, you can be tough, but be fair. And I said, yeah, you're right. So you can ask a question, I think, tougher if you're there more often. Like athletes let me get away with murder because I've interviewed them 20 times versus somebody, let's say, Gianna, you went into the locker room for the first time and you're asking, you know, a difficult question or a probing question. Paul O'Neill, who was a former Yankee, he's not going to like it. You know, he was sensitive when he was, on a, when he was in a slump. A lot of players, Mark Deshera didn't like to be in a slump, never liked questions related to the slump. So you have to figure out ways to ask those questions. I think I, I'm proud of the fact that, you know, I, I've worked really hard to get where I've been. It hasn't been like uh, an easy road. It, it's filled with tough nights, um, holidays, weekends. You miss a lot of events in your life. But I'm proud of the fact that I still cared enough about my family and paid enough attention to them along the way and have a successful marriage of 40 years to a great Ithaca College student. So I'm really proud of that aspect too. But, but mostly it's just being someone who is trustworthy, who hustles, who's dependable, and who's been fair and honest along the way. I think, I think those are the things that people will, will remember. That is amazing. That's amazing. Um, obviously, you know, you work so hard. It's it's great to see it all pay off, you know? Um, so it, it takes, it takes a long time. It's like, you know, when I'm, I'm in, you know, somebody says, Oh, you're an overnight success. I said, yeah, I'm in my sixties. I'm an overnight success. No, I've been doing it for almost, I've been doing it for 42 years. And so you never get away from the core principles of work ethic, preparation, attention to detail relationships. You always go back to those things, mm -hmm. you, you know, and, and now more than ever, you don't rest in your laurels. You continue to grind. You continue to work harder. It, it's almost harder for us to create content because tonight, for example, we don't have any live games. There were times where we had six games in a night. I mean, you would have the Knicks and the Nets playing and the Islanders, the Devils and the Rangers playing and Seton Hall, St. John's and, and Rutgers playing. I mean, it's eight games right there. It's crazy. So there are nights now where you don't have any games going on. So you have to be more creative and find stories or compelling things that mean something to your local viewer. To kind of finish everything up, like I said, you're so accomplished. Um, it was an honor getting to speak to you right now. It's been great. So to everyone else though, what advice would you give to not just Ithaca college students, but anyone who is striving to accomplish all that you have? So just be humble, work harder than everyone else. I like working from 12 to three in the morning because nobody else is. If I'm doing a big project like the US Open tennis or a marathon or the Olympics, hey, if you're up at 2.30, the other guy isn't, you're beating him. Um, treat people with respect. Uh, I learned that from my folks as well. Treat the president of the company the same as the janitor. Um, enjoy the community and the giving back aspect. Uh, receiving is nice, giving is nicer, giving back is nicest of all. And just don't be afraid to take a chance to do something out of your comfort zone and work with people along the way. Those relationships, those partners, those people you work with, those are the ones that, you know, will be part of your legacy, especially if they continue to do well too. 
And it's how you treat people that comes back to you in spades in a big way. It really does. I agree. Treating people with kindness, taking what like life gives you, running with it, that kind of thing. It's easy to be nice, Gianna. It's hard to be kind. So try mm -hmm. to be kind. I agree. <laughs> so that brings us to the end of the interview. Um, Bruce, I wanted to thank you so much for taking a break from your very busy schedule and joining us tonight. I know I'm pretty sure you're in the middle of two shows right now. Yeah. So thank you so much. Any last words to everyone watching? <laughs> Go Bombers. Next year, we'll have a Cortica Jug. Next year, Dan Swanstrom and his team will be back on the field and they will be kicking butt. And Ithaca students will be back in uh, their dorms, let's hope, and you know, back, back on campus and we'll have a sense of normalcy and I, I know we'll get there. So just keep the faith and, and wishing the IC community the best during these unprecedented times. Thank you so much again for being here tonight. And to everyone watching, make sure to tune into our YouTube page to see what the team does next. Thank you and have a great night.